Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel where we're gonna do another real world review on a carport, as if I didn't already have enough carports. However, this one's a little different. You can get these on Amazon, uh, two sizes. You got large and small. I opted for the large and it came in three boxes. And in case you didn't notice, we're gonna kind of just dive right into this because it is hot out, 102 degrees. I'm gonna try to get Jen to help me put this baby together real quick and give you, you know, some tips on uh, installing it or assembling it. And well, your first tip is gonna be have a hand truck because if you have a long walk to where uh, you gotta go where they drop it off, well, it's heavy. The first box is 48 pounds and the other two were 65 and 67 pounds. So your, your delivery driver might be like, yo buddy, what's going on with all these heavy packages? Anyway, uh, you, know, you can't even, I mean, one hand in that, it's, it's very, very heavy, guys. Before I turn to the boxes, I do want to say it's probably best to assemble this right near or in the exact location where you're going to be putting it, so maybe your driveway. I thought about putting this one where the Chevelle is, but I still have some organization to do here, or maybe back where the Fury is. You can see without a carport back here, this thing gets just covered. This is only from sitting a month, and it's just, I mean, we're not even into the fall yet, and it has a bunch of crud all over it. And one of the benefits I see to putting it back here is it might last a little bit longer because it's out of the sun unless you have a branch or tree come down on it. Uh, the UV is going to be one of the, the big items that kind of attack your carport fabric. Although from what I was reading, these are rated about yeah, three to five years you should get depending on your location in the country. Like if you're in Las Vegas, sun all the time. Oh, it, that sun really chews fabric up. And there's a look at it. You got some instructions and a whole bunch of pipes. This reminds me of putting a tent together when I was a kid with my dad. The thing had like a hundred million pipes on it. They do say these are galvanized, but you can see it's painted on the outside too. So hopefully you know, decent galvanized coating on the, on the inside or beneath the paint to help protect it. And while I used a knife to open these, do not use a knife on this box because you'll definitely cut the fabric. So the first thing I recommend doing is laying it all out, getting real familiar with your parts. Make sure everything's there too which it turns out everything's not here for me. I need these brackets and bolts. And then I went back and checked the tracking. Turns out this comes in four packages, not three. Now I'm still gonna try to you know, get this together most of the way though. On these plastics, it shows uh, the, the part number. So BCR004, 004. So I separated all those and left one still in the pla uh, plastic. And then so on and so forth, which e each of them, on these angle ones I did wanna show you, you know, the pre-bent ones do have some chipping paint, but that galvanized looks looks to be pretty heavy duty underneath. So time will tell how that holds up. And then as far as the straights, so you have the, the 004 straights and then the 004 right straights. Upon further inspection, we're missing a lot more than just a few nuts and bolts uh, with these little short stubby pipes. So for now, we're gonna just put the, the ribs together and then stack them on the side. We'll touch base when the uh, fourth package comes. Now that all went smooth. We do have one pipe that's bent. Looks like maybe from shipping, but it's no problem. I can bend that right back with a pair of pliers. Good enough? Mm -hmm. Got Mr. Gus hollering at the chickens. Where you going, boy? I'll chime back with you when the rest of the parts come. Probably. A few days later, fourth box came in. So it comes with 24 of these shorties and then four of the slightly longer ones. So you got two of those for each side. Bunch of hardware. The lock tab, this is for when you want to lock the thing. This will be like, uh, goes in the, the bottom pole and you put a padlock on there. And the other side, that's going to be for fixing it. So I'm kind of just jumping into this guys real quick. I think it's supposed to rain a little bit, or it's possible anyway. Uh, those two longer ones on the bottom rails, you know, they're gonna go right here in the center and all the other ones, you're gonna be using the nuts and bolts and bolt them all in just like that. And these little angle brackets are gonna go, you see, you could really put them anywhere, but it shows toward, toward the outside. Let me get that assembled and show you. I 
that's probably one of the more tedious parts of this assembly because when you're pushing the bolt through these holes uh, some of them weren't cut perfectly straight but i did opt to use nylock nuts like this this is m6 by one instead of the the uh, lock nuts that came with it the lock nut and washer just because these you know will never loosen up over time or fall out and you know, i just happen to have them so now i'm going to snug all those down the only other tip i'll give you is make sure you know, put the long ones in first in the center here so you don't get them mixed up and the uh, the cut with the the longer part that's going to go up so where the hole is closer to the end that goes to the bottom the other reason nylocks are better is because when you tighten these you want them to where they're just touching and basically loose you go any further and see so you're going to crimp this down and then when you move the pole it's going to scrape all the paint off like it did on on that one so again you should be able to take your wrench and just just rock this back and forth it doesn't even need to be tight just on there and the nut can't come off and that's why nylocks are better where's our helper at huh go get the mommy go get her seems my helper is unavailable so we'll just try and slap this up uh, kind of going against the instructions i'm gonna I, i've plugged both these ends in and joined them we're gonna have to take these off to be able to slip the fabric through later but now i'm gonna throw all the the ribs up and then hopefully throw the fabric on and we'll go from there And it should look like that, although it is leaning back a little bit. Uh, so if you have these on this side, that makes this the front and vice versa. Uh, we'll, we'll start with that and, and keep on going. I guess I could flip it around and see if it changes at all. But anyway, we got our worker back. Let's uh, try and slap some fabric on. I'm curious how easy this is to move at this stage if you decide to yeah, move it. Let's see. Where are we going? Just rotating. Yeah, pretty easy to move around. And here's what we ended up with. Uh, probably took maybe 40 minutes to get all that on. I'm starting to wonder if there's uh, if it's directional. I didn't see that in the instructions, but let me show you what we got going on. Uh, first of all, this is not touching on the ground, and I might just have to rearrange these around the corners a little bit uh, because unless you know it has to be anchored or something. But see, as we go down. The first time I went down, it actually split this seam open a little bit, and it's putting major uh, stress on on these. Like this one is, is super taut and just kind of, you see how it's lifted up off the ground? So there seems to be some shifting. You have to put these on too, um, but you know, they didn't even get the bottoms in place. And as you can see, these have to be maybe be shifted around a little bit. I think that's sorted, and then we'll, uh, we'll chime back. But you know, maybe, Maybe it is directional, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be. Here's what it looks like from the outside. I now see the issue. You see this seam, we didn't have this line up, lined up right because this one's all the way over here and the elbow's there. And this seam is not proper. So that seems to be the issue. Let's get that fixed. Correcting that seam to relax it a little bit and now everything's sitting more flush. I was able to Velcro those down and then to exit, you simply grab this. Push her on over, let it sit, and uh, that's how it looks. Now, of course, gotta anchor this down to either the concrete or use some kind of stakes, anything else to keep it from blowing away. It does come with the concrete sleeve anchors. If you have it in the driveway, you'll leave one side permanently affixed with the, the concrete bolt, but it's kind of nice uh, being able to throw both sides up because now it takes up very little space. It looks much easier to move. You can drive right through it. I mean, just super easy to use. As it starts going down, you can slow it by grabbing one and the other. You probably don't want to let it just fly down. But uh, yeah, here we go. 
However, if you do let it drop down, it seems to hold up pretty well. You do have vents on each side, and Velcro on the bottom, and then you can tie them up if you like. Time to move this. I think we'll try and walk it back to where the Fury is. Again, was gonna put it here, but then I realized the snow sliding off here in the winter, it will just crush it immediately. This is only rated for eight inches of snow on top of it, and they definitely recommend cleaning the snow and ice as it accumulates, because otherwise this, this will crush down. You don't have very strong trusses here. <laughs> That was easier than I thought, and despite going over an uneven surface, that's held up just fine. You do want to make sure you're putting on a level surface, so I'll probably rake this out a little bit, and ideally not soil, because otherwise these steel rails are going to sink into it and then rust very quickly over time. I'll uh, put it here for now, and then in the future if I like the spot, maybe I'll elevate them on blocks, or you can also put plastic down, and that way you prevent the humidity and moisture from coming up in the ground. Certainly tight, but what do you think? If it's pretty snug there, definitely not gonna be able to fit the Fury in it, but maybe the Chevelle. And then you wanna leave a little gap on the back too, because as snow comes, you know, maybe even more than this, uh, it's gonna accumulate on the back, it's big time. crooked and even though I parked more to this side I still had plenty of room to get out of the door. Woo! Look at that. Maybe needs a few little tweaks and uh, down on the front of course you got to put the clamp down to be able to, to, to secure it but overall I'm thinking that looks pretty good and uh, you know when you want to pull your car out Uh, of course now the last thing left to do is to anchor it so I can use any type of screw in anchors because of course if a storm comes that's going to rip this away and then you'll want to add the rear and front hold downs. These are very easy to put on you just slide the fabric out of the way undo that connection slide this into place and done deal. For the front anchor you could also opt to use a piece of blue stone like this just I used some Tapcon screws screwed them on in which will leave us with a nice gap on the bottom that way I can open the side vent and we have a good draft coming through all the time keep things dry again if you're putting this on a flat driveway though you're not going to have a problem with it sitting flush that's only because the the ground's just uneven otherwise guys I think that's going to wrap up the review and installation video on this carport uh, it's certainly a cheaper option than going with one of the steel ones it's, you know again this might only last five years or so I guess time will tell I think if you keep it out of the sunlight and you don't have any branches fall on it, it should, you know, you should get some good use out of it. I'll let you know down in the comments. If you guys got any questions, feel free to ask. And I'll definitely drop a link to this down below on Amazon if you want to check it out. You see, I kind of went a little ham on this tree. I actually had the power lines up here. I was hoping for some rain today to maybe give this a good test, but it doesn't, it seems like it might have missed us. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully covered everything and gave you a good idea of what the IQB carport is all about. It just so happened to downpour last night. Let's see some water on everything. Let's see how this thing held up. All right, well, seems to be dry. On the top, some, some puddling. Right, let's check it out on the inside. Nice and dry. Seems to work well. I can already see a bunch of leaves and stuff getting on the top. And uh, yeah, don't see any water coming through anywhere. So we're gonna call that waterproof. What you guys doing, huh?